Okay. Remember. Let's start. Remember me when I am gone away. Gone far away into the silent land. That gone has repetition. And that whole line is very gentle and soft. Far indicates that the person speaking is not coming back. It's very far away. Silent land, silent, it relates to her voice. She's saying she has a loss of voice and a loss of communication where she's going. Um, and it's the, these two lines are very nostalgic and mournful and filled with regrets because she's leaving a lover behind. When you can no more hold me by my hand, Hold me, that's tactile, that's physical. And you shows it's a personal thing. Also, when you say someone has gone far away, it's a euphemism for dying. It means it's making it softer, it's making it easier to handle. And when, the word when, she knows she's going to die soon. So it's a very urgent, it's, she knows it's going to happen. Nor I half turn to go yet turning stay. She has no choice whether to go or not, but she is struggling, she's fighting, because she wants to stay alive. And she had a long illness, so she's been on her deathbed um, for a while. So she, she's she been on the death door, but she, she turned back. Remember me when no more day by day, you tell me of our future that you planned. Remember, this is imperative. She's, she's been urgent and demanding. She wants him to remember. So you tell me of the fu our future that you planned. So he stopped telling her of the future. Or, or this means like when he's forgetting about her and the things that they, they never got to do. Because they never got to actually fulfill their future that they planned together. Um, so she will no longer hear of their plans or their memories. Um, but no one wants to be forgotten. That's what she's touching on. Only remember me, you understand. So this is her being demanding. She's saying, do not forget me. The word only. It will be late to counsel then or pray. So things will be over because she's dying and she's going to be dead. And th they won't be able to do these things anymore. It's going to be too late. Yet, if you should forget me for a while, so now that yet, you show there's a change in tone. And should shows it's not a command, it's a request. It's a suggestion. Now she's shifting, she's allowing him to forget about her. This indicates a change in the content or the tone and even a change in the rhyme scheme. Um, she's basically saying she doesn't want him to forget her forever. But if he needs to forget her for a while, for his own happiness, it's okay. And afterwards, remember, do not grieve. So she's saying, you can forget me for a while, but after that, remember me again. But don't be sad, it's okay. Don't grieve about forgetting me for a little. And then now there's a colon, so there's an explanation. For if the darkness and corruption leave a little vestige of the thoughts that once I had, so darkness is negative and death. So both darkness and corruption is, are very negative words. Um, and this line is positive. But a vestige shows that little remains. There's not much left. She's basically saying, don't remember all of me and be sad. But keep a little of me. Keep the good things. Basically what she's doing is she's, she's making peace with the death that's about to come. Um... The poem is also to herself as she makes peace with death and makes peace with being forgotten for a little. She's basically saying to him, forget me if remembering makes you sad for a little. Better by far you should forget and smile than that you should remember and be sad. Let's see what I said. So rather forget and be happy than remember and stay locked in grief. She doesn't want his love for her to keep him sad. It's a resolution. Um, and it's a positive re resolution for her. And these 
<clears throat> words are contrasts of each, other, of each other. So basically she turned around to an understanding or a different conclusion of what remembering means. So it goes from despair and demanding to more optimistic and more content with her conclusion. And a very unselfish, comforting, forgiving and understanding so that she can be at peace with dying. She accepts death. Um, it's not about being totally forgotten, but being able to be forgotten at times. And this is also written in Iambic Pentameter. Ten syllables, stressed and unstressed. It's an elegy, a funeral song, um, or it has an elegy quality. It's also written in, in an imperative, which means it's commanding. And the first bit's tone is melancholic and um, demanding. And it's a Petrarchan sonnet or an Italian sonnet. Yeah. <laughs>